Okay, a follow on from the heart video or the heart and blood video and steroids effect on these areas. A few questions about what do you do, at what dose does it happen, and people I think are a little bit panicked. So I want to try and put things in context a little bit today. So we'll start with lipid management. Now, I don't think to a degree it's particularly dose dependent, it's more duration dependent. But there are some specific drugs that will have a greater impact or also have a greater impact on hdl and ais have a greater impact on hdl they both load hdl a lot more than injectables do however ldl is going to be raised as soon as you push doses above super pharmacological i.e out of range and ldl is going to be increased as soon as you start using the exogenous jet their test now there's various types of ldl some good some bad but the thing is, we're not going to know which is which, so it's irrelevant really. What's more important is that we just have a general management of this area. And, you know, unless you've got specific testing facilities where you can get that tested, then well, great, crack on. But for most of us, it's just going to be a case of trying to manage me the best they can. Now, this is why one of the reasons why I'm a big advocate of time off to allow these to recover and get back into range. When lipids go out of track, they can start to lead to an increase in, in fat in the blood cells, in the blood stream, should I say. This fat can then start to deposit on the walls of the arteries and form plaque, which then in turn narrows the arteries. This in turn reduces blood flow to the heart, a lack of oxygen in the heart starts to damage the mitochondria, which is the, the, sorry, the, the heart wall, the mitochondria, wrong one myocardium my apologies the heart wall so now cardio is going to help this healthy diet is going to help this but the big one is time off if you're not going to take time off at least come down to correct cruise doses i.e proper trt maintenance doses of like 125 150 mig a week you know 250 a week will put your put put your end mole blood values at around 80 to 100 that's one and a half times above the upper limit of natural. That is not a cruise, that is a small cycle. You're still gonna be doing damage and you're still gonna get a buildup of fats in the bloodstream. Now, once you test, if you see you have a problem, citrus bergamot will help correct it. It will increase LDL, HDL and reduce LDL. Lipid stabil isn't very good as correcting dodgy lipid values, but it is good at protecting them. So if your lipids are good prior to cycle, taking lipids to build, going into cycle will help to protect those values. Obviously a healthy diet will help, plenty of healthy fats will help. But it is important that we do manage this area. If it's left unchecked, over time, and we're talking years, months to years, then you're gonna get these high levels of fat in your blood well, that happened quite quickly, but you'll start to get that to deposit as plaque on the side of the artery walls. And there's plenty of ex-users that 10, 15 years later have had cardiac episodes. And it's never been linked to their uses because obviously 10, 15 years of not using and not training, they don't look like a user. So it's never been linked. But it's a fact that then arteries were narrowed when they were younger. Now, when they were younger, it wasn't such an issue. But as they've got older and their cardiovascular system has deteriorated with age, then these narrow arteries become a problem. So, manage it, keep an eye on it. If you see it going out of whack, do something about it and don't leave it out of whack for extended periods of time. Next one, heart. Um, left ventricle and the heart wall. Now, left ventricle enlargement happens with all sorts of physical exercise, so that in its own right, it's not a major panic. Steroids can alter the structure here, which can lead to some irregular heartbeats and some form of arrhythmias. But again, I wouldn't be overly panic. It's not particularly gonna give you a heart attack. But changes in structure to myocardium, the heart wall is a bit more. Now, we get a thickening of this and we get a build up of scar tissue of this, but also what we get is a reduce of elasticity. Heart wall doesn't flex as well. Time off or time at very low dose will allow the heart wall to thin and some element of the flexibility to return. 
but if you're cruising on 250 300 mega a week you're not going to get that downtime so that that heart wall might not thicken anymore it's definitely not going to start to diminish and again this seems to be more time on related than majorly dose related so the longer you were on the longer you're running at those higher than natural levels the more the buildup of damage in the heart is um, quite often an issue is triggered by a stimulant so quite often it'll be a pre-workout or a recreational drug that will actually cause the heart attack but it is called the, the reason behind it is because the heart can't flex correctly because of the thick wall and the scar and everything else that you've done to it so again time off or downtime will allow heart walls to thin back down and return to normal and again cardio is going to help in this as well it'll help protect the heart now last one blood values so biggest concern here is renal well not just the biggest concern but um, stuff like EQ and Oxy we all, we all most of us are aware will increase our RBC we get better ox oxygen transit and we get better nutritional transit the downside is that our blood starts to get thick and it effectively turns to sludge in extreme cases but it starts to get thicker that increases our blood pressure now in our kidneys we have little filters little glomeri these are quite delicate you start pushing blood through there at high force at high pressure and you'll physically damage them you start pushing blood through there that's thick and sludgy and you'll physically damage them you start pushing blood down an artery that's narrow through plaque build up you can see where this is going now a quick fix give blood but it's something we need to keep an eye on and again like lipids is probably one of the areas that we don't really check enough now it's not to say that just because you're not taking EQ or oxys you can ignore this because testing its own right will increase RBC so it's worth just checking your bloods periodically and just seeing where your RBC values are um, and where all your blood values are and adjusting accordingly be it with some blood thinners giving blood or just some downtime okay and the last one is thrombosis uh, now this is blood clotting I've seen a few of recent months where bodybuilders have issues with blood clots um, and I don't think particularly they were caused by usage on its own right but they seem to have a predisposition predisposition to clotting a little bit more than the average person this is because steroid use increases uh, homocysteine which is an agent used in blood clotting as I explained in the last video so it's worth just keeping an eye on that and if you find again it's an issue you might just need to take some downtime you see this encouragement we have now for cruising and cruising at higher doses it's great if you want to be a mass monster yes it will help you get bigger it will help you maintain size but there's nothing wrong with cycling you can maintain size on cycling and I've maintained shitloads of size on cycling let's face facts here all right most of us we're never turning pro most of us we're never gonna earn a penny out of this I have indirectly but I wasn't gonna earn it standing on a competition stage that's for sure now things are getting better in the UK with the formation of the PCA and prize money insurance but still you're not gonna earn your living at this now you want to get massive quick that's your choice that's gonna put massive strain on your body and potentially do some quite long-term damage okay been there done it and the result is that you're not gonna remain healthy and you're possibly not gonna maintain or sustain that lifestyle and training for an indefinite period of time now if you just enjoy competing you accept the fact that you're never gonna make it all the way 
and you want to be the best version of you and you enjoy what you do, then surely longevity should be your aim. So yeah, you'll get there quicker by blasting and cruising and keeping high levels in, but you won't stay there for as long. And there's going to be a price. Now, you might not get quite the same size by doing a PCT approach or a cyclotic approach, but you're going to be a damn sight fucking healthier. And you're going to be around a lot longer, and you're going to be able to do and enjoy what you do a lot longer. So, you know, you need to be realistic about where your potential is going to take you. If you have the potential to go out of the way, if you want to go for it, go for it. I hope you do get there, because the rewards at the top are massive. And that would probably justify the cost to you to get there. But for most of us, that isn't going to happen. So really, is it worth fucking yourself up to look good in a t-shirt? To, to impress someone you don't even know? Or wouldn't you be better still looking good in a t-shirt 10 years later because you've been sensible about your drug use and your drug approach? Check these things. Check cholesterol. Keep it as close to range as you can and at least be doing something about it if it is out of range. Keep cardio in. Keep fit and healthy. I know that's cheap coming from me. I agree. I understand that one. And monitor blood values. There's not really much else you can do. Some tests will show you here homocysteine so you can see if it's getting elevated. But generally with that one, there's not a lot you can do. So... It's just because, as I said, downtime, so important. Give your body a break, let values get to normal. Then you're not compounding problem on top of problem. So to put this in contact, just because you take steroids five and a minute a week, are you going to drop dead next week? No. And most of these problems will not occur through one cycle or two cycles or even three cycles. But if you're going to stay on year on year, blasting and cruising and your cruise doses are high, then yes you're going to start to go into danger areas with these problems. If you're not testing and you're not aware where your cholesterol level is, you're not aware where your blood values are, then again, you are inviting damage and it's going to creep up on you and it's going to bite you in the arse. Test. And I recommend everybody at least has one off period a year. Do eight months. Do one cycle, then take a month to, to take two months off. You know, nine months. Fine, but have some downtime. Look at the pros now. Even them, you'll notice they have periods of time when they're down in size. It's because they generally take time off. They do the competition season, then they take time off. It's only the amateurs that stay on day in, day out, all year round. So, you know... You want to stay in this support, you in this sport, you want to be good in this sport, you have to be in this sport to achieve things. You're not going to do that if you're hammering yourself into the ground with too many drugs. So watch those levels, test regularly, and adjust accordingly. But, you know, you're not going to drop dead in a week, you're not going to drop dead in a year, you might never drop dead at all. But they will have an impact. And time seems to be the big factor here. It's how long it goes on for unregulated that is the problem. Not so much how high your dosage. Right. I'm going to get off now because I've rabbited on for nearly 15 minutes. Uh, take care, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.